how to know where the target's going to be. Yeah. This is something Jim Dalton said once, and he's never repeated it. I, because I couldn't memorize candle patterns, bull flag, this flag, raccoons holding pennants, all this stuff. I, I couldn't memorize that. I need to know why something's happening. So what I look for is accumulation and distribution, right? But balance is one of the things he said. You just take a balance zone and double it. Okay. Right? And once you double it, right, you'll know where the target is. And you can see that this balance range, we got to the target to pretty much the penny. Okay. Right? So here's the balance zone. Here's double of that balance zone. It is the simplest, most clear way of knowing where your targets are and where you get acceptance and rejection. Because, you know, so you're looking to short. Once you get to that top of this balance, you know that if the market can't break that, you're shorting this, right? Your stop, you would be that standard deviation here. So you'd be short 14. Your stop would be 15. And then what you do is once that short is initiated, you look to see if we can break 10. Now, if you're a short scalper, you can take your profits at 10. If you are a longer time frame trader, you can stay in this trade because when it comes back up, it can't get back up to your entry. You see? It gets okay. to 12, and it looks above 12, and then it comes back in. So when it breaks VWAP, you'd be looking to buy it back here. Now, if you're a longer time frame trader and you have a longer, you have a larger account, you can handle the swings, you can stay because this is a one-minute chart. You can stay in this trade until it breaks VWAP because what has happened is now supply has built up over VWAP and it is selling off, right? Mm. It's, all, it's all supply. Markets are nothing more than supply. There are only times when we get initiative buying by investment banks, like investors, like BlackRock. That's why after uh, the COVID crisis, the market rebounded to new highs. The reason is, there's a very, very good reason that nobody ever talks about, and I don't understand why. The market fundamentally shifted its revenue model from a commission-based revenue model in the 80s and 90s and 70s to a asset-gathering-based revenue model. Got it. So if you look at BlackRock, they have, what, $10 trillion under management. Got it. They have, own a billion shares of Apple, right? Okay. If that stock is not traded actively every day. It's taken out of the public float and put at BlackRock, and they're holding it, as Brian Shannon said, time frames. Right. Right? They are looking to hold that stock for 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that stock does not get traded out. Secondly, that stock gets paid for in cash, so it's not subject to margin calls. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's an asset that's owned for a long period of time. So after when COVID was happening, BlackRock was not selling Apple. Fidelity was not selling Apple. State Street was not selling Apple or Microsoft, right? So because their time frame to hold an investment and their investors as opposed to traders is a 30-year time frame, we call that locking up the paper. That paper is locked up. If you look at Apple, it's got 16 billion shares in the floating supply of the company which is in DTC, in the Depository Trust Company, right? There's 16 billion shares available for trading, of which, look at the daily trading volume in Apple. It's less than 100 million shares. Less than 1% of the float trades. That's why these stocks have huge ranges. They don't liquidate for long periods of time because it's all momentum trading, it's just like the S&P. Now, I'm not sure if, if the Nifty is the same thing and those companies are held, but I'm sure you have pension funds in India, just like everywhere else. Investments in the securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.